conversation with uh, Aaron and Jos, and uh, of course related to the conversation we had actually uh, uh, this email conversation we had during the last month discussing about in the process of the making of the film that maybe some of you uh, has already watched or maybe not. And um, for me it was a kind of a very interesting to be part of a dialogue in the process of the making of a, of a film. Actually, we, we met in, with Arl and Jos in 2008. That was the first time uh, we met after the uh, Berlin Biennale exhibition. I just uh, loved the piece, that the film they did there, and I just I rushed to Brussels to make an interview and to meet them, and uh, an interview that was never actually published, I think. We never published that, okay? And, uh, but that was the kind of uh, uh, the first conversation we had, and, and uh, the occasion to uh, stay in touch came during the year uh, many times, and discussing and talking about uh, uh, their, their, their films. And uh, I mean, uh, what was nice in the, in the process of the making of this conversation was the fact that, of course, when you talk with an artist uh, um, in the construction of a piece, you, of course, it's, it's always uh, a thing of related content. Somehow we were talking about a lot of different things that were going together in the film. Yeah, yeah. I don't really remember what I... Yeah, I, I think we should just spot into it and maybe... Uh, uh, and I uh, forgot my glasses, so I cannot... Okay, I will, I will, read, it, I will read it for you. Uh, no, but I, I mean, I think that this thing of the related contents is, is something that is part of a construction of a piece and construction of their, their film. And uh, so I think that is, we, is also something that will happen uh, tonight. We actually decided to call this... Uh, evening uh, with the title, this kind of informal conversation that will be open also to the floor. Uh, the title is Grekischke uh, Feigen, that is the title of this uh, content-related conversation we are going to have, and Arad Dios maybe will also show some things that will be uh, interesting yeah. or, uh, and related to some of the topics we will talk about, and in any case related to the, the I mean, the atmosphere of things that are surrounding uh, their, their practice. I don't know if you want to start with the Gerkische Feigen. Yeah, one. I can do it. Yeah, okay. I hope you can hear us. Uh, uh, yeah. yes. Good, thank you. And if you have questions, just interrupt us also. <laughs>
it's over. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, uh, can, can you can you yeah. tell us the story of, of this? The whole story of the film? <laughs> Maybe if you are able. Uh, uh, it's more the story about uh, the the cassette. It's a film from the 70s and uh, it was hidden in a cupboard of my father. My father had an iron cupboard which was always locked and one day he, he left it open and uh, I found this cassette <laughs> and I, I kept it as a treasure and we started looking at it the years after. And uh, yeah, it's a very good memory actually. <laughs> and always when we are in the process of making something new and we are blocked, then we say there's still Greek is the fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a kind of inspirative thing. Uh, actually, uh, when you, because they sent it to me before, so I was aware of the film, even if I was not with you discovering kind of the object, but uh, when I saw it, I started try to understand, I mean, to try to see which, uh, <coughs> and uh, try to match, I mean, some of uh, the atmosphere of your films with kind of a, this strange uh, uh, trailer, and we were talking also before, there is there uh, also in the, in the film several images of, you know, close up of hands and, uh, I don't know, taking bodies or uh, the tension of looking to people in sexual way and it was, I don't know if this is something that uh, in a way was uh, interesting for you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for, for me it's also the way it sounds, Griechische Feigen, mm. it's a very nice uh, melody almost. And uh, especially when it comes from a country where there is no melody. And uh, for me it's also a bit this kind of uh, uh, post-war uh, um, leisure uh, society which installed itself also in Germany and the way uh, Germans deal with this kind of uh, interpretation of exotism and leisure. Like uh, Bob Marley or Ananas mm -hmm. or uh, Griechische Feigen or Caiparinia. Yeah. It's the way um, this uh, exotism is interpreted by uh, by uh, people that have nothing to do with Caipirinha. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think also this fragment, because we, we looked a lot, uh, already a lot of times also, to Marta, yeah. the Fassbinder yeah. uh, movie. And I think this character of Marta was very essential for us to develop the film that we made. Mm -hmm. Here? The Here? Yeah. And uh, if I look at this, it's this kind of, uh, um, how they say in German, Urlaub machen. That means? Uh, go on vacations. Okay. And, uh, and this kind of, uh, yeah, uh, atmosphere in Marta when she comes from the beach and that she lays in a hotel on the bed. Mm -hmm. And that she is burned in the third degree. Yes. And uh, yeah, this uh, this leisure thing mixed with uh, with uh, sadism mm -hmm. and uh, and and cruel stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's a bit what I feel when I see this. Yeah. And. I feel something totally different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I 
it's also like the way they, they, they make these Greek partings all the time, all over again, this music, this typical uh, thing which they explore, which are quite depressing, I think. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, depression is also very close to what we do all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. During um, actually uh, the conversation that we had, uh, um, yeah, of course we were. Um, actually, you mentioned an image that was related to this idea of uh, leisure, and uh, you were mentioning when I was asking you something about uh, the light of your films in general. Uh, what, what, what kind of light are you trying to achieve in the film? You were mentioning me an image of some English people on the beach. You were talking to me in the sunset, getting drunk. You don't remember this. No. <laughs> because uh, we, we, were, we were trying to talk about, yeah, uh, of course it was uh, the, the topic of depression and, and uh, objectification and kind of stepping down to uh, a condition of uh, being headless somehow or you know without being aware of the thing and getting object and uh, it's of course close to the idea of depression and I think it's really strong how it's produced also with the light that you, you mm. are uh, using in films and uh, also here we have yeah. <laughs> um, uh, um, C can you say something about the, the I mean, the um, way you, you... Yeah, I think the, the way we try to use the light is like... Uh, but that's maybe not so interesting, yeah, but I, it's well, like a, a flattening light. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit like a, a merciless, merciless flattening mm -hmm. light. It's always overexposed. Yeah. And also in real, it's overexposed. Yeah. So and the actors have a lot of light on them. Yeah. And this really makes the set like, I don't know, uh, a kind of, as you said, a non human kind of uh, situation. I mean, also shadows are kind of, uh, I don't know, not, not, not real. They look like, I don't know, uh, a weak kind of. Uh, they, they, they are projected on this, this uh, white plus board, I mean corner where you set the scene and everything looks like uh, on a kind of a artificial corner of, 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 of something. But, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, the, uh, 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 this is something we touched in the conversation and this, this is something that, uh, I mean, putting together this uh, headless condition and then depression. You were writing uh, a statement that I really love in the text, or that is, you want now you're curious to know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, because you thought uh, you you wrote something like about radical dumbness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were talking yeah, about yeah, dumbness. Yeah. That is something that I mean, if you watched their their film, it's uh, of course one of the very interesting topic and you were t talking about radical dumbness as you know uh, something that is really far over uh, or even far uh, um, I mean even beyond the, the dumbness that a human c being can can have I don't know if you yeah I think it was in relation with the ISIS yeah. things mm -hmm. <laughs> like beheading people yeah is also saying I'm taking away away your brain, so yeah, yeah. you become like uh, like a zombie or mm -hmm. for me or a, a and yeah in in Belgian politics you feel it a lot this really dumb decisions. Of, mm -hmm. Like the, the Flemish now, they want to build a new cultural center at the outskirts of Brussels, which costs like 40 million. 
uh, a theater, um, a zaal, a place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but in the meantime, they cut like the whole budget for culture. <laughs> so it's so dumb just to keep it Flemish there. Yeah. To, that's also an example of very radical dumbness. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's all the time there. It's, uh, yeah, it is interesting that you are mentioning uh, it's going to be a, a flowing of thought. Uh, not because he's mentioning politics and in a way also <coughs> I mean, the idea of the puppet or, you know, the dummy. Um, uh, I remember it was also mentioned uh, Dieter Tag on, on, on your things. Is uh, you know the, the dummy the, the the dummy can be related. I mean to the politician. No? sometimes you have this uh, fake figure of politicians who are taking the power and they are called the dummy or the dumb. You know they're just replacing and and it's very scary because you see just it's like an empty body, no, uh, taking the decision mm -hmm. and then you don't know exactly what is behind him and maybe there is I don't know. Uh, a group of people who wants to, to be, of course, uh, I mean, behind this figure, but it, it's interesting that it's matched with the idea of the uh, being headless, being, you know, a body empty, and that I think it's also something that you are... I was always scared about this thing, because when you step down, when I, when I watch their, their films, I mean, if you really... W one day I made a kind of an afternoon of uh, Josem de Groeter uh, and Arthis afternoon, and in the evening was really uh, because if you watch all of them, uh, of course, this idea of um, uh, being headless and empty bodies is uh, is very very strong. And, and uh, uh, I, I I was wondering what kind of film would, would you consider in, in in your history the first one where this idea was uh, of playing with issue of uh, being headless, being, you know, the dumb and mm. brainless. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difficult question because you have to go back. But <laughs> I, I, I have a couple of suggestions, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's <Maybe>. good. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, for me it was when you also started to be. I remember at the beginning there are some films where you also on the scene. I mean you were playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is and then when I, yeah, where you yeah. were. I mean also we were. Like, yeah, together. And then I remember this the parallelogram, and uh, also when when the scene was starting to be in a kind of a closed space, mm -hmm. like in a room. Uh, kind of very uncanny mm -hmm. and abstract and this thing I mean started to be very strong more than in those where you were I remember the deserter yeah yeah, was, yeah. yeah at the beginning when you were in, also in the landscape you know? yeah. so this idea of being in a closed space when it started to mm -hmm. me it was really pushing on this uh, idea of you know the set was very important to yeah there was uh my parents, <coughs> they lived in a house on the countryside and they were, I, they still are very civilized. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they are civilized in a very formal uh, way. And uh, it was important, it's, uh, it's a very, uh, it's a very fragile moment that happened in the history of the life my father, mm -hmm. uh, where he was on the countryside looking outside of the window and uh, he saw for the first time in his life a Pakistani. Yeah. And I think this Pakistani also saw for the first time in his life my father. Yeah, I think so. And they <laughs> both screamed like animals <laughs> because they, <laughs> they were both in shock like <laughs> Yeah. And uh, shortly after, my my father decided to, uh, together with my mother, to move to the city mm. because uh, suddenly this kind of safe uh, harbor 
was uh, invaded by some uh, untypical element. And uh, then we developed, or we, we uh, with the parallelogram, uh, I remember that we were repeating a scene in our head, which we didn't film really, literally, mm -hmm. but it was about a man saying to a woman inside of a room, uh, and the woman looks outside, and the man says to the woman, don't look outside, look inside, it mu it's much better. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where it started maybe, yeah. to look in the, in the corner, or uh, even to the wall, or, uh, or um, <coughs> uh, through, uh, through uh, humans. But I can I I can show you something. Yeah, that would be great. But it's 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 not uh, uh, it's 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 about looking. Mm -hmm. Oui. <laughs> you jump it to crawl. It's uh, the scene when uh, uh, the animals, it's, uh, it's a movie about, um, about uh, a donkey mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that plays a bit the role of uh, Christ and that is um, um, brought from, from one uh, bad thing to the other. Mm -hmm. And here is a scene where uh, he's brought to a circus, mm -hmm. a circus yeah. where they uh, where he's introduced to the other animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, it's <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. So it's uh, it's uh, it's about this uh, animal put um, put in front of different uh, other animals, mm -hmm. I in this scene, and uh, I think we we do a bit the same mm -hmm. with the actors where we put one to the other, 
and then they they are looked at or they look at and um, <coughs> and as as we don't know these people so much uh, who play in the in the films uh, or as we don't know what's in their head mm -hmm. for sure not they are not in the film with their head mm -hmm. it's uh, very nice to to film this and to to uh, discover uh, small things which are unpredictable okay. uh, a bit like you okay. yeah it, it, it's very nice because there is this idea of of course this uh, not close up but in foreground I mean the eyes also I mean of the animals and uh, and of course the the topic of staring that is really part yeah. of your practice since, since years and it's really and uh, uh, yeah I mean uh, staring uh, I mean if you if you if you read it also in psychological terms when you when you stare something is also a way of I mean uh, trying to possess the subject of your gaze so uh, and it's really a kind of uh, harmless way of possessing something no and uh, yeah, this is one, one, one comment that com comes to me and that is always, uh, I, f I feel it very strong in, in your, your uh, practice. And it's also related to the topic of viol violence, to me, the idea of the staring. I don't know if, if, if you uh, feel this. Uh, that has been, uh, yeah, I read it in a book last week that the most uh, pure or yeah, pure gaze to look at something, it's it's when you look at pornography. Okay. It's completely. You're completely concentrated on. On the flesh. Yeah. So yeah, there yeah. is no more interference of everything. Yeah. Of anything, it's and, and uh, yeah, we try. To to recreate this case also when we film, mm -hmm. so they they we say just look and they look, but they must be thinking something, mm -hmm. but they stare at the, yeah, we say stare at this, yeah, they have the right. Yeah, this, this is and we try to make it as, as if they look at pornography, I mm -hmm. mean, at, they are so concentrated, yeah. but, uh, not that we look at pornography all the time, yeah. but <laughs> we, we could, not possible <laughs> <laughs> because you just have to eat and sleep. But um, I mean, what you're saying of this thing of the here, I like it very much because I remember that the first time I, uh, I mean, I really watched one of your film was as I said in Berlin during the uh, it was the frigate no yeah, in the yeah, basement yeah. of the Kunstwerk and I was really impressed by because the. Uh, Maybe some of you uh, uh, has watched it. There is a, actually I mean, there is a scene with people, and and, and the center of the scene there is a, mo a black model of a frigate of a, of a boat that is completely covered of paint. You know, every and and uh, of course it's it's, it's uh, uh, there are close-ups of, of of the boat and people are looking at it and the details of the knots of uh, the wires of the, this small model of a boat completely made in black are really uh, kind of give, uh, set the whole atmosphere of the film. This idea of the details, it's really creating a kind of a physical impression to the body of the viewer. I was the viewer at the time and I felt like, I don't know, something violent in a way or something attacking me or mm. you're touching myself. And, uh, because sometimes the, 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 the close up of details that is made and covered in black, I don't know in this case was, they were really giving me a feeling of, uh, I don't know, a kind of perversion related to the obsession of looking mm. at the details. Mm. Uh, and and uh, so that is, and, and, and this thing you're saying about the porn film is, is exactly what we were saying. So staring is possessing, you know, in a way yeah. of trying to... Uh, or, or but maybe uh, it was also a bit inspired, this uh, frigate, Mm -hmm. So the ship is big like this, mm -hmm. 
And we found it in a, <clears throat> in a second-hand shop where we also found a few years later the painting for Das Loch. Okay. And this kind of... In, uh, in the same shop. In the same shop. Mm -hmm. And this uh, area where the shop is, it's on the highway between Brussels and uh, Antwerp, mm -hmm. the A12 it's called. And on this A12 you have, um, you have a lot of uh, history in the sense that, uh, for example, next to the shop, to that second hand, uh, a big second hand shop, there is the, the old concentration camp. Okay. Uh, which is now a museum, but yeah. it's still quite intact, yeah. so you can visit uh, the thing. Yeah. The, the thing. And uh, you have this kind of, uh, we were, as we are interested in uh, Antwerp senior, si senior, seniors, seniors, Sen senile seniors. Signore. Signore. Let's talk in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Signore. Signore. Okay. But old. Very old. It's Signor. Okay. Signor. And the uh, moustache. Uh -huh. They have moustache. Okay. The in Antwerp. Antwerp. In Antwerp and all the people, all the old people. Okay. It's a tradition okay. Like okay. to okay. have like. Uh -huh. And to drink a palm with palm beer with this uh, moustache no. and then have the dripping yeah, palm yeah, this one, okay. and then there uh, there is this uh, area where they live and uh, then you have these hobbies of this uh, older man mm -hmm. and one of them is uh, building min miniature mm -hmm. things and in Antwerp now it's closed because uh, the owner got convicted for child, child abuse, abuse. Ah, I see. and uh, there is a miniature museum. There was a miniature museum where all the old Antwerp people were like um, focusing on mm -hmm. uh, in detail on the on the to remake Antwerp city in small. Okay, mm -hmm. and you also have this in. Uh, in a German book about color photography mm -hmm. that was uh, that came out in the 40s mm -hmm. before 45 uh, you these photos are photos from flowers or an ashtray or a, mm -hmm. or a, a towel mm -hmm. or a bread so there is this kind of a Armageddon and then you have a close-up with the German camera on a bread, yeah. which is uh, very perverse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, the history of Antwerp is perverse. The, over, the overall history. The overall okay. history <laughs> and the overall future also. <laughs> uh, what's also strange about this second-hand shop, it's really for the poor people mm -hmm. who buy there. and. Uh, so you had the concentration camp, yeah. which was used a lot for gypsies mm -hmm. to deport them. But now the shop next door, 40 years later, is full of gypsies buying okay. very cheap. In the shop? In the shop next to the concentration okay. camp. Wow. So it's quite a loaded road, this A12. You should walk it once. <laughs> to get Both ways. together with you. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But and do, do you, for instance, do you go on uh, by them most of the objects they are using for I don't know the films or you know related to or I mean just yeah mostly when we prepare something we go there just to see uh, if mm -hmm. there is something. Uh, uh, and and for instance all. The things that were in the pictures of objects as friends. There are quite some coming from there. Okay. But also from other second hand shops. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Belgium, 
where the folklore or the tradition of each region or, or the psyche of, mm -hmm. of uh, each region is reflected in the amount of special mm -hmm. objects mm -hmm. or specific objects yeah. that you can find there. Yeah, I mean, and this is interesting in relation also to the fact that, I mean, things in your uh, practice, they're, I mean, people are things. Things are maybe like people or, and, and there's animals and everything is kind, uh, all these kind of actors or protagonists of the film are trying sometimes uh, are becoming something else or true, I mean, the making mm. of your stories are as characters becoming, I mean, a, a person can become an animal and, and uh, this kind of uh, metamorphosis is also part of a process of sometimes of reduction or, as you're saying, flattening, no? Sometimes this is very nice to me as a uh, verb that once you use. Yeah, we, we like a lot two dimensions mm -hmm. uh, and we try to, we made uh, flat metal sculptures uh -huh. uh, called the white elements, okay. they are quite tall and they're made out of a metal plate and uh, then we arrive again at the dumbness because mm -hmm. uh, it's a kind of um, entourage of the face which is drawn on a paper uh, where the head should be on the sculpture. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, it's, we are interested a bit in this whiteness. Mm -hmm. uh, which is also uh, the name, the white elements, is uh, the name of the party which takes place each year in Austria, mm -hmm. near a lake. Okay. And this uh, party with only white people is called the white elements. And everybody is dressed in white and they do a kind of organized uh, rave with uh, vodka Red Bull for three days. And they, they, they dance and have sex during three days. With clothes? With clothes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe I can. Yeah, maybe it. we uh, can see. Ale. Yeah, because. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah. You've never been there. Yes, we've yes. been there. Yeah. That's okay. how we know it. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, you were wearing. No. Right? no. 
we came, we were there by accident, okay. always on the way back from Milan. Okay, yeah, when <laughs> you come to visit, then... <laughs> and there we also saw this. <laughs> it's starting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Do you want to try? So when we were there uh, the last time, okay. uh, in Velden, okay. so Velden is part of Carintje, where you had this uh, nice guy called yeah. Jörg Heider. Yeah, yeah, I remember you loved him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in Velden there is each evening uh, people are eating on terraces. And then you have this kind of youngsters that look like uh, the youngsters in uh, funny games. Mm -hmm. And uh, each evening they are having fun. And then uh, there are megaphones in the whole village. And through these megaphones they... <laughs> So sorry, maybe. No, oh, it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe you have to repeat because they were not hearing you. What, what, what the last time you were? There. So they, we were sitting on a table, but then we had to go to the lake mm -hmm. because they screamed at us on the. How do you call this? On the street. Phones. Oh, Megaphones. Megaphones. So we went to the lake, we had to leave our food, mm -hmm. it got cold, but it didn't matter. And then we, there was this very big fountain with uh, Pavarotti singing in Italian, yeah. uh, or Sole Mio, wow. but huge. Huge. But just, I mean, all the body or just the head? Just the head, okay. with this filthy beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, in, the, in the effort of singing. Yeah came out of the water and mm -hmm. it was quite impressive. Yeah. yeah, but I remember actually now that you show me, I remember that you told me this story mm. of the white, uh, dressing white communities yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, in a way, I mean, it's 
uh, it looks very beautiful. Maybe if you can tell me where is the season, I will maybe go there. But it's also interesting because it's uh, it's it's a really a kind of a parallel world. It's an enclave. I don't know. I or an enclave and a community with its own rules. Or it's a kind of a something. Uh, you were talking about bidimensional thing. Or uh, and I, I have the feeling that, that I mean you're also interested in this idea of the fact that. Uh, this community are having very strict rules, and they I mean, and also the flatness or the bidimensional, it's a kind of another parallel world of those you're kind of exploring, and uh, and again, and uh, of course the body of Parav uh, the the head of Parvarotti brings me again to the topic of the of the head that you were really exploring. No, I mean, the head also in terms of I remember also the the mud of branched. You know, there is this topic of the head or uh, mm -hmm. uh, the sculpture of them mm -hmm. or, you know, the making of them. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, um, and, and, and in, in non-animated head was the sculpture of maybe the horse and the two characters looking mm -hmm. at the head. Mm -hmm. And you were not just confusing or merging and blurring the idea of who was looking at or who was the, mm. who was the object, who was the sculpture, mm. again, mm. and that, that, uh, that is a kind of very interesting thing. And yeah, and uh, I remember also uh, this, this uh, when you were talking about the B-dimensional, the two dimensions of, of things, uh, I don't know, it's also bringing or a topic that is the topic of the machines, or uh, I don't know why, but it's something that you also really are into that. I mean, yesterday I, I, I saw a video on YouTube of a robot singing. A robot singing? Yeah, I think you made it, or you made it. Ah, yeah, it was uh, a very stupid video. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ah, the basement of the basement. Yeah, okay. yeah. But um, yeah, and, and and another one that you I think you showed in Venice of a Japanese. It was a, during the, the architecture yeah. biennial, yeah. Uh, and it was uh, a robot walking, walking or, down the stairs. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And uh, I don't know why. Uh, of course, and also I remember some of the drawings, uh, the computer-made drawings. Uh, I mean, in the past you made. And again, this idea of making something that is flat is also, it's also the machine-like doing something, you know? I mean, because the, the, that kind of flatness you were kind of pursuing was non-human, again. And uh, I don't know, I would be curious to make the big question, what is your relation with machines or things like technological things? I don't know if it is a too much wider question, but uh, robot, uh, the, the, the video of the robot is, re is really like um, mm. to be close to the way you're making your actors doing something. So machines. Yes. Yeah, but uh, Germans are good in making machines. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we were also when we did. The Muka show, mm -hmm. we were fascinated. The latest. The latest. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were fascinated by drums. Yeah. I don't know why it came, but we started looking at drums. And also the sound, no? The sound mm -hmm. and the happiness of yeah. this like 20 tons of steel mm -hmm. rolling slowly with 10 people in it, mm -hmm. going always the same. Uh, direction mm. and then sometimes having a, an accident yeah. so we decided to make drawings of trams like 20 or 40 which became a series mm -hmm. and that's really uh, a work I really don't know why we made it <laughs> But it's there and it's good, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think we can try to guess why you made it. But I, I, I love those drawings in Muka and I saw this, this tram thing. 
and uh, <clears throat> because there was a kind of a, I don't know a little bit the tram in the end is a kind of a, a bit old-fashioned machine, so it has some roughness yeah, it has and its heaviness. Yes, exactly. And, uh, also, the white elements we are making now, mm -hmm. steel plates, they, they weigh, they are like 160 kilos a piece. Okay, really? And they the, are... The, 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 the support of... Yeah. These white elements, mm -hmm. yeah. And they, just to hang one drawing on them, I yeah. mean, it's a bit heavy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, we showed two of them in the gallery in Brussels and the assistants, they really, when, they, when we say white elements, they really say, please, <laughs> there's something else you can show because it's so heavy. Okay, because they had to draw them up. Yeah, but it's, that's, Ale, we help them, eh? but uh, it's this heaviness that, that's uh, important. Yeah, but I, uh, I think it's really, um, I mean, how can I say, this idea of, uh, I mean, for instance, in the film that is uh, presented here at 1646, uh, uh, one uh, machine-like thing or technology that is into the film, of course, is the voiceover, that is a kind of mechanical, no? A computer yeah. made voice, yeah. no? Uh, but if you go through, I mean, all your practice, I mean, uh, the kind of technical and mechanical things are kind of very often maybe not protagonists, but always present. Because to me, I mean, they are part of this idea of, again, uh, an object with its, with its functioning and with the enigma that is into a technology, you know? I think that you, I, I, I always think uh, when, when, I, when I see the functioning of something, I mean, of course, uh, uh, you can stare at it and try to understand, I mean, the functioning of it. And it is something that is, of course, in any case, enigmatic. Uh, because technology, I mean, the metaphor of technology is the maze. So you don't know exactly what it is of technical things. You, never, you can never predict exactly what they are and, uh, in, in the construction of them. And, uh, <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, we are <laughs> the entire <laughs> portfolio. Trying to find the white elements. I think it's the last ones. Yeah, I thought so too. If you, of <laughs> course, have questions, you can interrupt this kind of weird uh, flow of ah, there ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought they were very light in, in the middle. No, they are yeah. super heavy. Okay. They are eight millimeters steel. Okay. And these ones. They were, we had them shot with a Kalashnikov mm. to These make are people believe that they are steel, otherwise you see <laughs> this paper. I've, I've never seen them before, yeah. And you did it in person? No, no. there was a guy, uh, the first victim of the, of the Bende van Nevel. Yeah. Uh, the uh, killers, the killers of, of uh, Brabant Wallon. Okay. In the 80s, they killed people in the supermarket, yes. and their first victim was him, okay. because he uh, sells guns. Wow. And uh, he he did this for us. Wow. He's a very severe person. Yeah. Very very dangerous guy. Yeah. But he liked to do it. Uh, the, I think it's a Dutch actor. Uh, we we took a lot of pictures from uh, from Dutch amateur theater companies, where they have very uh, convincing emotions, and this is one of them. Then you decided to make the 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 gun action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice that you can shoot on them. You can cut them in two. Mm -hmm. You can try to burn them. 
No, no you cannot. No, because it's steel. <laughs> and uh, but the face will always look in the same way, mm -hmm. whatever you do with it. Yeah, of it's, course. Uh, autonomous. Yeah. It is also made with a tracy paper technique. Yeah, no? exactly. So yeah, yeah. yeah, it's already kind of an abstraction or of of of, of yeah a, a figure. No? It's a very to to talk about dumbness. It's a very stupid action mm -hmm. because you follow the lines mm -hmm. of something, and only when you followed all the lines with your pencil, you see what you did. And and <laughs> without kind of being aware, no? Yeah, I mean, without you, being aware. Yeah. You lose a bit yeah. of consciousness. Yeah. I mean, you told me that when was was the the first time you did you started with the, this uh, series of drawings on the tracy paper was Gustave Basel, no? Was it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah. exhibition and, yeah. and uh, you were you, you did it in the basement of Gustave. You told me. Or, or of, uh, in no. Brussels. Okay. okay. Did in, in, the, in Brussels. Okay. In a basement, and it was. Uh, in a way, it was nice to do. We had to do like 500 drawings mm -hmm. in three weeks. Mm -hmm. So we had, if you calculate, it meant like 40 a day or something. Yeah. It was really a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. Very relaxing. To yeah. but, but, but it was intentionally, was it intentional <coughs> to go in the basement? Or, or you had to be a bit like monks, mm -hmm. uh, cut away from daylight. Yeah. And then uh, a very nice effect of this uh, drug, I think it's almost uh, biological. Mm -hmm. If you come outside and you see somebody you don't like, you, it becomes a traced uh, drawing. Yeah. That person becomes uh, harmless. Yeah. Yeah, this is you, what you also done for, I mean, the book I created on the fairs, no? It was yes. exactly the same yeah. process. And yeah. in that case, was the, the fair people that you were ne neutralizing, or the fair pieces, or yeah. the fair layouts, the fair yeah. crowd. And, and that was uh, very interesting mm. in, in, in this sense. Uh, I, I have a uh, hundred of questions and topics, but if you have also some of them, uh, would be also, of course, great to. Uh, pose the questions to Jos and uh, I, I, So just interrupt us, please. Uh, soon stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop us. No, I mean, I, I have another uh, big, big, big question. That, uh, I remember that during, we were trying to remember our first conversation, or our first failed interview uh, in the Brussels the first time. And I remember that uh, we were talking about the uh, topic of fear. Be, uh, having fear, uh, feeling fear, and uh, uh, and also about animals. And I remember I was mentioning you because it was something that it just reminded me from 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 your piece. These scenes when animals are about the cat and the dog, they are encountering each other, and there is a moment of uh, just stillness, or mm -hmm. they're just not doing anything. They just care each other, of, uh, and mm. this encountering. And, and also in the history of paintings, I think. If you look in the history of painting through the subject, like animals, there are several pieces in the classical also painting of this encountering as a moment of uncanny or uncanniness mm -hmm. or unfamiliar thing. But I was also always curious to understand what is in the fear, because this is something that is, that is seductive for you, of course. And uh, what is exactly the fear? Uh, I think it's a constant. Uh, it's it's there, uh, and I think it's. Uh, um, I think it's uh, mediatized uh, in a very uh, cartoonesque way. Mm -hmm. So the fundamental human fear, which everybody should have. Mm -hmm is uh, reduced to uh, to something very uh, like in a cartoon, like mm -hmm. in a comic strip, yeah. uh, which makes me think of the Russian car crashes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. fear 
uh, minimize to seconds. I think maybe you know this. Compilation of car crashes uh, in Russia, they are obliged to have these cameras, dash cams, yeah. for insurance reasons. There is a uh, conflict who was, uh, who was mistaking and who not. Mm -hmm. If there is an accident, then the camera will prove uh, what it is. They must they do that, really? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. And that's why you have uh, like thousands and thousands of small films of car crashes. Yeah. And it's always the same kind of uh, suburban area mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of mud. And then you have uh, BMWs and South Korean cars mm -hmm. and old Russian trucks and they bump into each other all the time. And yeah, it's interesting the fact that you're seduced by accident. Uh, I remember once we were watching together a compilation of uh, the most, the scariest scene of horror movie, just a montage of um, and is but it, both in the horror movie and this in Russian series of accidents, there is something mm -hmm. that suddenly happens. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then yeah. in your film, actually nothing is happening, mm -hmm. but fear is there in any case. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it just it's interesting how you play with the uh, uh, exactly the op opposite strategy that is not uh, mm -hmm. making something happening. Mm -hmm but creating true a kind of a downgrade fear as a kind of a normal condition mm -hmm. or oppression mm -hmm. as a normal condition again and mm -hmm. it's very difficult <laughs> but that's we the road rage huh? that's the road rage but you have also the yeah. car crash uh, Connection seems very slow. Huh? It's better than you.
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it is true. It's tough, yeah. <laughs> the traffic stopped. <laughs> <laughs> They're very mechanical. We stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. If we manage, we stop. Machine are not it doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> under our control. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe we could just close uh, <laughs> <laughs> the computer and, and the conversation. No, I, I, maybe we just the few the last few things that are about the the film that is presented here. What do, what do you think? Just few. <laughs> just. Uh, Yeah, um, we are kind of out of control. Oh, wait. Good. Uh, yeah. Shit, I'm now in their office. The, the, we, it's not us. We close <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, something like that. The film? Yeah, I mean, the, the film that is presented uh, here, because for me, for instance, was a. Uh, um, Quite interesting the fact how we started communicating to make the the thing because you sent me a kind of a plot of the film that was uh, you wrote it in Flemish and then you translated it through Google uh, Translator and then you sent it to me mm -hmm. and it was just a mess but it was a this idea of having a machine translated text for me was interesting because there were names of characters, names of animals, and I was really not, and also the statements and the phrase, I mean, you can imagine how uh, a translation in Google can be really messed up, and, uh, and how uh, this, this kind of uh, text for me was exactly how sometimes Alan and Yost movies are, so the, the fact that uh, you misunderstand or you deserve misunderstanding on the structure is, uh, um, of, of the, the sequence of characters just not predictable in the construction so and it was a machine making this for me and that was the first impact that I had with the plot of the film mm -hmm. and then I entered into the characters but, uh, and, and I immediately was uh, uh, I don't know if you want to say what, something about, about the film what, what, how would you describe it? Or? Well it was a, quite a hard one this one it was not so easy to make because yeah. we, we, we made a, very, a lot of very bad shots, okay. very ugly, but um, yeah, if you say you like it, I'm very happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was very unsure about it. Yeah, I it's not really a film, I think. Mm -hmm. It's something else. It's, uh, from this one, we want to make the. Uh, it was an idea to make the some of the characters as a sculpture mm -hmm. in a cardboard to have them out of the screen. Mm -hmm. So it, we did it also with the. Fregat mm -hmm. and Das Loch to have the 
Yeah, to decompose it as a film, to make it into an installation. But it's still in, in the making. In the making. But we changed the sound into South African, South Afrikaans. Now it's in Dutch. To make it more, uh, to give it more medieval yeah. feeling and something which. Uh, yeah, more harsh and it's more. Yeah, when we showed it to Micheline, our gallerist, she said it's very gothic, like a gothic church. Mm -hmm. Like very closed and uh, there is no space, mm -hmm. so it's wide, but there is something oppressive. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I found it quite interesting, her remark. Yeah, I, I really like, sorry, no, you wanted to say something. Yeah, else. I think that the woman in the film is, you can consider her as a, a cultural her heritage term from Germany. You feel the kind of uh, centuries that were uh, lying behind her mm -hmm. and that sculpted her in the way she is now. Okay. So when we saw her for the first time, we were looking at the very expensive monument mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was nice to have this feeling of uh, what I described uh, when when you are uh, filming yeah. that you have like a treasure in your hands mm -hmm. which you can observe and so oh, do, do with this person what you like yeah. <coughs> Because we really uh, also when we act, we, when we uh, uh, direct the actors, we really uh, put them like uh, you, move, you push them. Uh, we push them like this, and then uh, the eyes like this, and so we that stupid uh, art talk. We we sculpt them <laughs> in a way. They don't have to hold their breath. Uh, well. Uh, Yes, in a way that we uh, we create a situation where they cannot breathe anymore. Mm -hmm. So they have to hold still so much that their eyes are hardly blinking and that their breath is uh, uh, stopping. But also our breath is stopping uh, when we film them. So it's very exhausting procedures yeah you, you, you always uh, creating again to me this kind of idea of a, a set where you bow to the actors and you are in constraints I feel this idea of putting yourself in pressure mm -hmm. it's a kind of a, maybe it's a kind of a masochistic in an interesting mm -hmm. way a process and I also think that in these cases uh, Michelin was saying uh, the idea of, the, of the, the, an entire film set up in, in a corner, or more or less in a kind of a space that is a corner. I mean, to me it was, because again, as I wrote you in the text, I mean, the corner is really the place where you're ashamed, where you, that is, I mean, the, 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 the space of, the locus of, I don't know, uh, potentialities, because it's the first element of architecture, at the same time is the place where you can be constrained to stay there. And so you are again in between a, a world that is a parallel world that is completely open to something, and at the same time it's a place where you mm -hmm. are just in constraint. And, and, and mm -hmm. so again, I mean, this uh, idea of uh, a parallel world is again mm -hmm. to me clearly, clearly there. And uh, I actually loved it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but there is one image when she is in the prison behind the bars, sitting. Mm -hmm. Looking down a bit with the hair that's falling. Yeah. There is something like a, a, a Russian prisoner who is mm. uh, hearing his sentence, like, or you're guilty. It's a very, uh, I like that image a lot. Mm. It has another uh, meaning. Yeah. I mean, there's some history behind it. There you feel. 
that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, because you, yeah. you, when you, when you, you go deeper and deeper when you watch a movie, also yourself as a viewer. I don't know what kind of feeling all you have, but uh, and in this process of going down, down, then you, uh, I mean, you kind of reach uh, uh, a, a kind of new status or a status of uh, that really is. Uh, it's like sometimes it's like if you can, I don't know watch yourself watching your film uh, or thinking to the possibility, I, I don't know, once we talk about, I was really fascinating the selection of the object or so you were making for the film. I really love the, actually, the kind of uh, dormos you have in this film and mostly also the chair when the, I call her the porcelain face lady is just ashamed against the wall and she's sitting on a black chair that mm -hmm. looks like a, a church. Is it, yeah, is it church. a church? Uh, church mm -hmm. chair. Yeah. yeah. Because also, also these two design, I mean these two objects are also uh, showing a kind of a, 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 a position of the body or pushing to something. I mean the door moves and then the, the, the church uh, chair is mm -hmm. about the relation of being in the knees uh, of in, in mm -hmm. no and uh, and she's pushed against the wall, mm. so also these kind of uh, the objects are creating also constraints mm. uh, to me are in a way interesting in, uh, to, to, to the setting up the, mm. this downgrade and this constraint atmosphere. Mm. Yeah, that's a very important chair, it's a church. Mm -hmm. We already have it for 10 years, we use it in every film. Yeah. It's a strange... Yeah, because it's tall behind, no? Yeah. And then because it's supposed to stay, yeah. Mm. I don't know if it's Protestant or Catholic. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, it should be this place where you really have to stay in the knees. I think it's Protestant. Okay. You have to turn it yourself when they say it and then sit. Yeah. Maybe we close on Protestant as a word. Yes. What do you think it's a, <laughs> it's a very, it's a very na nice one. What do you think? Do you Protestant, I think. Protestant. I, yeah. I think we started with the Grechische, Feigen, and we arrived to a condition of being Protestant. I don't know. That's, that's, uh, if, if, if you have. Holländische Feigen. Grechische Feigen. Holländische Feigen. Holländische Feigen. Yeah. Do, do you have some questions? Oh. Yeah, I might have one. Is, uh, Great. Do, do you have uh, a reference of Tar Theodor Dyer's film, The Trial of Jean d'Arc, for this one? Uh, no. No. Not, not, not really. I mean, completely not actually. Okay. But now that, also, that, that you mention it. Because yeah. you you showed the uh, ones and part of that and uh, yeah, from yeah, the rest of yeah. uh, Dreyer is um, yeah. uh, an investment favorite director is Dreyer and you are talking about the uh, church chair and uh, yeah. and then the prison bars and this is just like for me when I was watching the movie it was like yeah, the movie just constantly just coming back yeah. to me <coughs> it's, uh, I should watch it again I think <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, are there other questions? Maybe you have. Is it about a sort of finitude? Because the, when the face turns into um, uh, the sculpture, if, if there's all, if, if I, relate, I think about these monks, the Buddhist monks that meditate until they're mummified, almost. Um, and although well, now, obviously, with the, with the religious aspect of it, is it about sort of capturing a, a moment of finitude and making it infinite? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, um, I, I could add something about religion again. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's not matching exactly with the question. Uh, because, um, yeah, I remember when you made the show in Constalo Basel, that uh, if I'm not wrong, was the first time you were, there was the, actually you made a very interesting uh, uh, kind of work on the architecture of the, of the exhibition space, I don't know if some of you had the chance to see it. Uh, if I'm not wrong, you close some of the windows in order to make uh, just a white box space, and then the door was when when you were entering into the the, the, the show, there was a a display in two or two two or three or more holes with the the, the black the, sorry the white support and the drawings and the door was closed behind you, so you were un entering in a kind of, immediately you were understanding there was a kind of a whole, holy space or holiness of space. And then the exhibition was kind of, I mean, the, the parkour of it was ending in a space where there was this projection of diagrams and uh, the benches were, were having a kind of a, uh, they look like kind of church atmosphere. And mostly what I loved so much were the speakers. Yeah, they come from a Swiss church. Mm -hmm. They found them there. But you, you, and you asked to look for yeah. exactly those speakers. Yeah. White church speakers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they, these are uh, really objects that to me again set the atmosphere because they are very thin mm -hmm. and uh, tall, mm -hmm. kind of like bars of speakers. Yeah. And, and they are set in this way and they're just kind of also. Uh, mm -hmm. And there is this idea of, uh, of course, that from, from, from those speakers comes a noise of. Mm -hmm. And they are very actually also nasty. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. They have this feeling of being kind of uh, not, f uh, not, not really comfortable object or whatever, mm -hmm. then they're uh, setting the atmosphere of the mm -hmm. space. And uh, again, uh, I don't know if this church atmosphere was yeah, really intentional. I think especially the Protestant church atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, why there is a film made like Griechische Feigen, mm -hmm. because you have uh, in the mind of, of these people, uh, this is uh, like the summum of... Uh, the liberation. Yeah. yeah. This, you're and free, the freedom, sorry. To show that you're free, you show yeah. your breasts. <laughs> Are there other questions? Are you aware that there is a Dutch version of the white element? No. The witte element? There is a, a white version, uh, a white version, Dutch version of the white element. Ah, yeah? You know that? No. no. It's called the white sensation. We go to that. We go to that. But it also has a sensation back now. Yeah, because it's truly entrepreneurial Dutch spirit. White stuff and white, and it's also a black one. There's a sensation white, sensation black. So there are no black people at sensation. No, there are only white people. <laughs> 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 That's why you can't see them in the dark. So, wow. <laughs> so maybe, I mean, did, did you think that the white element was a purely, or maybe it is a purely Austrian uh, phenomenon? Did you find it only there? Uh, Actually, the question is how did you come across it? Yeah, yeah, they were, yes, they were visiting you know, and coming back very often. Yeah. I asked my girlfriend to look for the worst uh, place to stay in <laughs> Austria, <laughs> and she booked us a hotel, and we are very lucky we've been there. Yeah, I think that you said other times that when, when probably Harald is planning trips, he's always trying to ask for the worst place to stay. <laughs> because I remember a story of. Uh, a Swiss hotel. There was an old story. Where uh, Bruder Klaus lived once. Okay. And the one in the mountains, it, that was a nice place. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's special. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, let's have a <laughs>